Hey everybody, it's Gil here from the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and in this week's episode, I think I'm going to start to work on that section underneath the batteries where I noticed that the um, there was a beam that was rotted. Uh, I've been kind of putting this off for a little while just because I'm going to have to contort myself down into this hole. I'm going to have to grind fiberglass, uh, you know, while laying probably within inches of it. Um, and I actually don't have a good solid plan for how I'm going to repair it yet. I have some ideas in my head, but frankly, that's all there are, and that's a scary place sometimes. So. Um, I'm at the storage shed early this morning. Uh, I'm going to pull out a couple of these giant 8D batteries I've had sitting in the car now for three months just because, <laughs> because until I replace the batteries, I need these for core charges. Um, but I'm going to get them out of the way. I'm going to load up a shop vac, um, my jigsaw, uh, some marine grade plywood, and I think some of the pieces I'm going to need to ultimately uh, tab in a new bulkhead that's going to go from the bottom of the hull up to essentially the bottom of the floor or the sole uh, and then I've got to look and figure out how I work a beam structure if you will near the top of that so come on along hope you guys enjoy it parking just as close as I can because I hate picking up these damn batteries they're heavy I don't know how to lug these things out of here I hate that one first I hate that one second Cap to it. Oh, you thought we were done? No. Save money, don't have storage units. Alright, we'll shop back in. Saw and vacuum. Let's head down to the boat, see what we got. But the day doesn't start without my coffee. Feels like a rap song. Got my coffee in my hand and I'm heading to the boat. I'm gonna go grind some fiberglass. Hey everybody, I'm down on the boat now. Uh, I went ahead and took some time and I cleaned off a lot of these tools that were back here on this table behind me. I don't know if you can see this, try and lift it up a little bit. This was just covered in my tools. I got some of that out of there so I can get the battery set on there and, um, and honestly climb over it. Um, but I'm going to try and mount a light down in the, en in the engine room there and underneath this rotted area. Uh, and I'll see if I can get a camera down there and wedge myself into that hole so I can get a better look at what it looks like on the bottom side of the sole. I haven't done that yet, so we'll check it out together. Let me show you what I got to do with this floor, though, just to kind of open it up and expose it a bit. Now, here's actually the section where the batteries went, and those stringers, there's just nothing attaching on this side. So um, I'll move those in a minute. And then over here on this side, inside the bench, is where I'm going to pull some of that uh, base or flooring out of there. But you can see the table. I've kind of removed and cleaned most of it off. I have the batteries sitting up here right now just so that they're still connected. I have 12-volt electricity still in the boat. All right, I've got the floor pulled out of there. Let me climb on down in here. Here's where I'm gonna ultimately go. I think I'm gonna step on this beam here and then climb down in that area there and we'll see what happens. Shit, that stringer used to be attached right there, wow. It's the same here. Yeah, it looks like the same there. So I need to come up with something interesting here. Well, that certainly looks interesting. Um, I think I'm going to pull the broken pieces of the stringer out so I can get down in there. I'll vacuum up some of the crumbs and crap and sawdust in there so I can get a cleaner look. What it looks like to me, though, is where those stringers are broke, there's another section over here that was attached to it. So if I run a bulkhead this way, I can put new stringers on each side of it, and maybe that'll do it. i got to check it out and see. It started raining pretty good while I was down there doing some work and I noticed a little bit of water dripping on the floor. So I grabbed a flashlight and I started searching all around to see if I could tell where the water was coming in. 
This is really concerning to me, given the fact that we've just had all of the decks redone, the coach house and whatnot. Uh, so I was checking everywhere where I could see where it might be coming through. I put a camera up aiming at the bottom side of the deck so I could see where it was actually coming down into the boat. And there were four screw holes that went down through the bottom side of the fiberglass skin. And the water was pouring out of that pretty good, meaning that it was somewhere in the core in that section right there. This over here, I'm worried about. There, that is all glass, and I don't know where that's coming in. That's really concerning. Because um, it's not just a drip, it, it's coming in hard. Fuck me. I don't know if you heard that. That was just loud thunder and lightning there. Um, so I went ahead and got this uh, cleaned up down here. I pulled the beams out. Um, I now kind of see what I need to do. I'm actually thinking instead of doing a bulkhead, I think I'm gonna run a couple of four by fours and epoxy them down right to the base of the uh, hull and then run a beam across the top. I think it's gonna be a little cleaner and a little easier access for the refrigeration units which are stored underneath the sole over here. So I think that's the path I'm gonna go down. Um, I'll uh, run up to my shop and get the stuff cut up there where, it's, where I can actually do the work because it's raining outside pretty good. Good morning, everybody. So today it looks like it's going to be sunny and I want to take advantage of getting a couple more things bedded. When I was down here yesterday in those horrible thunderstorms and heavy rain, I still have water coming in around hatches and things that I just don't have bedded yet. Um, and after all the work we did on the boat, I don't want water coming in anywhere. I'm going to start here with these companionway rails. Deb and I did this a while back and honestly, we need to do a little bit of a better job. There's still a couple spots where it's leaking. I'll show you where it, where it looks like it's coming in from. So right up here where this angles in appears to be catching some water. I don't know if it's running on the inside of it or on the outside, but we're going to try and rebed this and see if it gets better. Good morning, everybody. Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and it's Saturday morning. We're going to get working on the boat again today. I think the things on the agenda today are try to do the repair on those stringers that I found down in the galley uh, underneath the bench seating. Uh, I started to try and do this a couple days ago, but I really wasn't sure the best method. I went and bought me some hardwood um, lumber, sort of 2 by 4 style uh, wood. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get underneath and apply that up as, as the horizontal beam. Um, notch the locations where the stringers would go that I'm actually replacing. And then I believe I'm going to put... Um, essentially lumber that goes down and is tabbed down into the hull rather than do an entire bulkhead I think I'm gonna do it that way so I'm gonna get down there and kind of take a look and uh, you know I, quite frankly I'm figuring it out as I go I'm not hundred percent sure so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done uh, a couple of small things um, the other day I actually drilled holes and rebedded uh, the two stanchion bases right at the entry gate uh, but I was out of butyl tape when I did it so I need to pull those bolts out and and bed those properly um, I also found a leak the other day. I think the leak is coming in from, ooh, hey bees. So I think the leak is coming in actually where the scuppers go through the sides of the gunnels. Um, but just to make sure, I wanna spend a little bit more time and evaluate that with some running water and, and verify. If that is the case, uh, you know, the yard will do the repair on that. If it's not and it's coming in elsewhere, I have to figure out where that is. Um, so it, that's gonna be a bit of a experiment here as well. Since this is gonna start with um, grinding fiberglass, I think I'm gonna do that first thing this morning. I'm gonna get my vacuum out, leave uh, two actual vacuum inputs going right to the edge of the grinder. Uh, I want to do that to keep the dust down before it gets hot and I'm sweaty and that stuff sticks all over me. Uh, I'm hoping to get that knocked out in just 20 or 30 minutes, so we'll see how well that goes. So one of the first things to do is this is where the old stringers went into the uh, hull. I'm going to cut that fiberglass tab out and grind all that down to the bare wood and glass. Then I'll epoxy a new piece into that and uh, re-glass over the top there. So it'll look a little bit more like that one when I'm done. Those are good. It's just these over here were rotted on the opposite ends behind the camera. I've got the three tabs cut out of there. Uh, I just rough cut them out with an oscillating saw and now I'm going to use my grinding wheel 
to grind it all smooth and get down to bare glass so that when I glass the new um, uh, the new fiberglass over the top of the new stringers, you know, it gets uh, some a good surface to bond onto. But these came out pretty easily, actually. So now it's just a matter of smoothing it up down there. That's going to be the dusty, messy part. You know, when I first started this, I, I said I was going to use my uh, my shop vac and I was going to hook it up there and try and collect some of the dust. I use that small mini um, portable dust collector. It's it's essentially a fine shop vac with a long hose. It just isn't powerful enough uh, to catch all the dust out of the air. And I don't have a shroud on my angle grinder like I do on some of my other woodworking tools. Um, I almost was using a very aggressive bit. So rather than using a 36 grit sandpaper on an angle grinder, I'm actually using a 24 bit metal grinding, a metal carbide grinding uh, pad. Uh, it works great, makes real aggressive work of it, but it throws the dust all around. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my larger shop vac and I'm going to use that attachment that you use for actually pulling across like a hardwood floor, or a concrete floor. And I'm going to stand that upright and hope that the stronger motor opening, bigger opening port sucks more of that dust down into it. Um, just doing that small one foot section has just scattered uh, fiberglass dust all over down below. Um, I do wear a respirator. I took it off to do this part of the video, but I am absolutely using a respirator as I'm doing the work. Uh, but I thought if I came down here early and got started before it got hot, I could do it before I'm sweating. But I'm essentially glistening. I'm, I'm sweating everywhere. Once you climb down in that hole and start working, it happens. So I'm going to be covered in fiberglass dust. I don't like that. I don't have a Tyvek suit. So I'll probably run into the little um, shower over here in the shop after I'm done grinding and cleaning up just to get all the fiberglass off of me before I start doing the rest of the repair work itself. All right, so I've got all of those pieces ground out of there now, and um, I've got it cleaned up. I vacuumed all the dust from down there, all around the fuel tanks and the fuel lines, um, all the hoses and wires. It's just a mess down there, but I got all the dust cleared out of there. Um, I climbed down in there, kind of laid underneath to take a look at the bottom side of it. Now I see what's going on. It looks like somebody's done a previous repair here, and they essentially re-supported and beamed the floor underneath the um, sole here, but not the section that went from uh, inside the cabinet over toward the hull. So this is actually going to make the repair a little bit easier. What I can essentially do is create a separate little section. I'll use a 2 by 4 a piece of hardwood that runs horizontal with some beams that go down to the hull like I was thinking. I will attach that all into the hull and then I'll be able to take some bolts or something and bolt those two pieces together from the previous repair and this one which would make it one solid member. By doing it this way though, it, it makes it a little bit more uh, accessible for me because when I bolt them together, they don't have to be touching. I can add about a six inch spacer between those two beams, the one that's there and the one that I'm building, which will just make all the repair work I'm doing a little bit easier. It'll be easier to notch this board for where the stringers go down into it. Just for a lot of reasons, it's going to make it a lot, lot easier to do. So. The good news is I have a plan. I need to cut this piece 45 and a half inches long, uh, and then I'm going to mark it, and I'm going to actually use a, a saw and notch it out so the stringers sit down inside of it as opposed to sitting on top of it. I think that's going to be a much stronger, uh, more secure repair as well. So let's get to it. <laughs> oh, and I'm going to run over and rinse this fiberglass off of me because I'm starting to itch. Walking across the beams to get down here. And then uh, put a pen down here. Let's see. Make sure I have all the things I need close by. Get my feet in here. <laughs> to get my feet in here, I got to make sure I don't have. Uh, there's a um, the depth sounder is down here, the sonar, and I don't want to. I don't want to hit the wire and kind of mess the wire up. So, so sometimes boat work's all about the acrobatics. So I've got myself wedged down in here. And I don't know if you can see this. This is going to be the beam. I just have it sort of temporarily sitting here. And I'm going to try and dry fit some of these sections. But this is what I was talking about. There's another support just about four inches behind this that's been redone with studs and everything else. So I think I'm pretty sure that's really going to be helpful for me. So let's see if we can uh, figure this out. Uh, 
All right, so I've cleaned up the fiberglass crap off of me. I ran to the hardware store. Um, I brought that the stringers with me. It turns out what they think this is is a Brazilian hardwood. Uh, they said something they had that was similar to that was going to be a Spanish cedar. It's good for any kind of water. It's a hard and a dense wood. So I went ahead and bought an eight-foot piece of <clears throat> the the Spanish cedar, and I'm gonna. Uh, it, it's wide, so I need to, I need to rip that board. I'm gonna do it on my bandsaw. Uh, so I've come back up to my little workshop here. I'll pull the piece out and I'll at least get this thing ripped so that I have it in the correct sizes for each board. I'm then going to rough cut um, the stringers. Uh, and I say rough cut because I don't know the exact length of them. So I think all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the ends at the angles I need. Um, and uh, and I may notch uh, part of the beam. I'll, I'll put up a diagram to kind of show you what I'm thinking about on how I'm going to attach them to the new horizontal beam there as well. So let me get this thing out of the car. I've got my uh, Spanish cedar. By the way, my truck has smelled great since I left the lumber, lumber yard. So let me get this stuff marked up for what I need. Now here's my old stringer right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this up on the bandsaw and I'm going to get the width adjusted at the fence for this. And then I'm going to rip this entire thing on the bandsaw. Um, I thought about setting up the table saw for it, but it just seems like it'll be quicker and easier with the bandsaw. And because I'm going to glass over this whole thing, I'm not real concerned if it's a perfectly smooth cut. I will need to, um, one, cut this at an angle. This is the part that goes along the outer edge of the hull where it goes up at an angle here. But you notice here it's not square. It's square right here. But then as we get to this edge, it's rounded over, and that's because this is where the glass goes up and over it. So we want to make sure that's rounded and there's no rigid edges um, for the fiberglass. Alright, <clears throat> so we've ripped both of these pieces of wood right now, and it's now just a matter of um, getting this cut. I'm going to cut these long. What I actually want to do is get the angle set down here on the end, and I'll do this on the ends of the board, and then I'll carry them down to the boat, and I'll cut them when I get there, because I intend to um, notch out the beam when I actually put it down on the boat. Uh, I'll show you that when we get up close with it. Well, that was good. I went ahead and got everything cut. I got it sanded and rounded along the top. And now all I can do is go back down there and cut them to the right length and notch out the boards that they're going to go into. So I think I'll do that tomorrow morning. I'm heading home to catch me into the shower and get ready to head out. We'll see you guys.